morning, folks. I am singing it today. The stuff is going to get streamed on Facebook, YouTube, and everything else. So you can see what I'm doing there. Okay, better. We'll see. So I'm just trying to see if uh, okay, maybe YouTube is working as well. If you are on any of the platforms, do just send me a quick hi. So I know. You can see what I'm doing. So last time, if you all did see my live feed, I was making mugs. Uh, made around 40 plus mugs. And um, after making those 40 mugs, I did attach buttons to all of them last night and then today I need to attach handles to those 40 plus mugs so you will get to see that part of the boring job I guess I did already make the handles I made uh, around a uh, hundred handles yesterday so half of them are kept to be used for the next lot of mugs I'm gonna make uh, these 40 odd handles are gonna be used first and then the remaining I'm gonna use later so these other mugs for which I'm gonna attach these handles and so the tools that I used for attaching handles I do have my scoring tool I have my paintbrush my scoring tool also has a knife on the other end so that helps and my secret weapon is a cookie cutter and I will show you why I need a cookie cutter for making handles or attaching handles. Okay, let's get the tool cleaned up. There we go. I've made these handles for a very long time let's see make sure that you're getting a good view of me attaching the handles okay so with everything I make there's a different placement for which you can see things better so that's scoring it and then I take a handle now since the surface of the mug is round if I cut a straight line on my handle it doesn't fit well but if I use a cookie cutter which is the same around uh, circumference of my mug I use that to cut the top of my handle so it gives that curvature which matches the curvature of the mug which makes a better join I'm going to score that. And so that gets attached. I know at times you will have to see the screen above, the miniature screen, and at times you'll have to screen see the other screen. So that's how. I make my handles and then 
cleanup and attachment is happening with the paintbrush at the same time. This is the best way to show this. Maybe this is better. Then, since these are uh, hand built pieces, uh, this is something that I do every time I handle the mugs, is remind the mug to be round again. So it's just a small push I do there with, the, um, with my forming cup. So unlike throwing on the wheel, where once you have thrown your piece, uh, the clay gets that memory of being in the round. Uh, when you're hand building, uh, you're starting with slabs, which are flat, and the clay particles have a memory to be flat. So you have to keep reminding that clay that you want to be in the round. And that's the reason why every time I handle the mug during the making process, it is in the round and it will stay round. But because I don't want it to flatten with all my handling and stuff, um, I take my uh, forming cup and push it in the center of the mug before I place it. That just kind of, um, you know, make sure that everything is sitting nice and round. Is anyone watching online? I don't know if you are on YouTube especially. I know last time the Facebook live feed did work. Facebook and Twitch work. There was probably nobody watching on Twitch. I don't have many followers there. But I did have conversations with people, uh, with Keston mostly, Keston and Melody, on um, Facebook. But uh, I'm not quite sure if the YouTube streaming is working. The platform does tell me it's working. But... I really don't know if the messages are going through. So let me just check. If I am online. Okay, I think I am. I am online on Facebook. And on YouTube, I'm not quite sure. So let me just check. Yeah, I think I am live on YouTube as well. All right, so. If you have any questions, feel free to message. And if you don't, like always, I'll start talking about knitting and fiber. Something I can't talk enough about. It's always on my mind, even when I'm um, working with clay. I am mostly thinking about fiber and knitting. So there we go. And I will be doing this, I hope I get to finish this by 11 because then I need to take Casper for a walk. For some reason, he, uh, it wasn't raining this morning. Usually that's an excuse for him not wanting to go for a walk, but it wasn't raining. We did go for a walk. But he just quickly went, went pee pee and walked right back in. He's like, no, not interested. It's a lazy day for me. And usually after um, his morning walk, he'll have his uh, breakfast. Uh, 
he did not even touch his breakfast. I went back to bed. I think it's the fall season. He does what I wish I could do. It's just like, oh, get up in the morning, laze around, go back to bed. That's what he's doing today. So I need to try to take him for his walk again. And if people are wondering, I'm sure people know Casper is my dog. So. So yeah, he hasn't eaten his breakfast and he's just been lazing around this morning, which is fine. It's not like he has a job to go to. Adventures in sock knitting. Anyone interested in hearing that? I did finish another pair of socks and I did post a picture recently on Instagram for the three pairs I have done so far. Uh, one of them is not for me. Uh, it was made of a larger size and the other two were intentionally made for my size and it still needs a little tweaking. Um, so I'm going to try certain things. Uh, one thing that I'm hoping to try today is try to make a sock with ribbing that runs all the way from the cuff, uh, through the heel and through the front of the foot. Uh, so so that it fits a little bit more snug um, I in my head it's kind of confusing as to whether ribbing really makes a sock fit snug the reason being is that there is more yarn that is used when you do ribbing right the stitches are going back and forth and I understand that because of um, the way the stitches are formed, they pull in, which is why ribbing is used other on cuffs and things that you want um, everything to squish in. The problem with that is though that uh, it, it makes for a stretchy fabric which can go from really skinny to really thick I mean you know really wide but in a sock I don't want the fabric to go really wide and it will go wide where I want it to go wide and I want it to sink where it does and that's what ribbing should essentially do but you know sometimes when ribbing is stretched and you have worn it like i've noticed this on brim of hats usually um that if it is uh if a brim of a hat is done with ribbing and then you know you've worn it throughout the day it gets warm and then the ribbing gets loose and then it's a loser so I don't know if that's going to happen with a sock, that it will, you know, the whole purpose of the ribbing will be lost. Um, I don't know if anyone has insights on that. And I know the best way to see if it is true or not is to actually uh, make the sock with ribbing running all the way from the cuff to the bottom of the foot and see that if it actually does fit better or does actually looser than what you would expect. 
So. So most of these mugs are for pre-orders uh, that are due to head out by the end of this month and right after this set of 40 mugs or so is done I need to work on more mugs for upcoming shows and build up my holiday inventory which is next to nil right now so and these mugs are actually holiday orders where i know it is only september but people who have ordered before know what happens if they wait too long that there might not be uh, a chance to get their holiday orders on time so it's always better to order in advance so you're sure you get the gift in time for the holidays As you can see, each mug is made by hand. The handle is pulled from clay and each handle is attached individually. So, when you are at a show, I always recommend people to feel the handle of several mugs, even though they might be the same size. Sorry, airplane. So even if the mugs are all the same size and the handles might all appear to be the same, they are each one is individually attached. That was loud. Oh my goodness. Can you all hear the plane? Hi Sue. Thank you. I don't know if you could hear the airplane, but that was pretty loud. Yes, it is really important to find the one that feels right in your hand. Um, and as you're seeing right now, each handle, even though the handles are all pulled and they all look pretty much the same, the mugs are the same size but while attaching you know i could be cutting one a little longer a little smaller and i purposely kind of do that because some people don't like a very big handle and some people want a very big handle so they can stick their four fingers in so each one is slightly different but i try to make them pretty much the same but you know there will be variations I'm not uh, sticking this in a mold, which is cutting each handle at the exact length. So, I always recommend people check check the handles. Sometimes, and especially people who cannot decide, right? They're going like, oh, I like all the marks. I don't know which one to get. I said, well, then hold each one and find which one works best. Oh, you too yeah we are we are in federal way and it's like 20 minutes away from the airport so we are always uh, in the path of flights and uh, you know when we purchase a house we earlier even used to live close by so the airplane sound never bothered us and it still doesn't and we don't even hear it that often or maybe I think we have just gotten immune to it, but every now and then someone will visit and they'll go like, what's that sound? And I'm like, oh, that? Oh, that's an airplane. Like, you don't even hear it or notice it. So, okay, so that was eight months done. Like I said, I have 
40 ish mugs to go. I have totaled around 40 44 mugs, I think I made in this batch. I usually try to hit 50, but I'm always shy of a few. It all depends on how many I can make out of a bag of clay. And not one bag of clay, but three bags of clay, actually. So, I get close to 48 most of the time. And actually, in this batch, I did reserve some slabs separately because I wanted to do... I'm working on something new. Some new patterns and textures. So... I'm looking forward to making that stuff. So looks like these comments are coming from Facebook. So I don't know if anyone on YouTube is watching. But if you are, just send a message. Or just say hi. Just so that I know that uh, uh, the messages from YouTube are also visible. But not necessary. Uh, it's kind of hard to test these things and be sure everything is working. But oh, okay. Yeah, you were talking about a lace. When you say next week, when is next week? What am I, am I assigned to do something next week which I'm not aware of? I'm trying to think. I have nothing next week. Mm. Oh, I am teaching a pottery class at Makers on the 28th. Is that what you're talking about? Gosh, I'm so lost in my head. I think you told me, is it crochet lace that you were talking about? I think that's what you had mentioned last time. And please remind me if I'm supposed to be being, I'm supposed to be somewhere next week, which I have forgotten about. That's my phone giving me alerts. That's not a sale alert. It's a shopping alert. So Alison, remind me if I'm supposed to be somewhere next week.
one other thing which um, I wanted to mention was you know realizing this stuff is handmade and the glazes are also uh, individually um, done so sometimes glazes turn out thinner and thicker and darker and lighter uh, and that's just like a very slight variation and that's what the beauty about the handmade product is so even especially with my plain glazes i'm pretty consistent you know you get a honey colored you will get the same honey colored every now and then it could be just a tad bit darker it's kind of like the whole dye lots thing right if you have ordered 10 mugs of the same color I most likely will be glazing them all 10 together so they all land up looking the same but if you order say a honey mug now and then you order one five years from now uh, my glaze composition has remained the same but you know of course it's a new glaze batch in which uh, maybe some of the oxides are slightly different they still look they're gonna look pretty much the same but if you put them side by side you might see some variations so that is kind of something that is expected but um, recently I did receive a message from someone who had purchased my work several years from now unexpected a perfect match like doesn't happen with yarn why should it happen with something like this so. and sometimes it's the ingredients that change uh, even though I order all my glaze material from the same supplier there's always a chance that their suppliers have changed or the place where that particular uh, mineral or something is being mined uh, that might have changed so a lot of things uh, change but you know in spite of that, I, I still always test every time I make a new batch of glaze, I will always test it on test pieces before I start glazing uh, my whole lot. Even though if it's the same glaze, I mean hundreds of times. And the testing is not just, uh, you know, to test color and stuff I could have made a mistake uh, while making the glazes and I do make all my glazes from scratch so I know exactly what's going in um, and if I need to alter something I can so the reason why I test is to make sure that I didn't mess out an ingredient or I didn't get distracted or double something which I wasn't supposed to glaze testing is very necessary and you want to guess how I learned that there was this one time I didn't test and coming back to the honey glaze it was a honey glaze which was a problem so I had and I had glazed big platters with it the thing was it was it's one of those times you know you're getting really close to a show and you really need to glaze pieces but now you don't have enough time to make uh, you know to test out a batch of glaze but you're short on that glaze so you can't glaze your big pieces so you have to make more glaze so I did make the glaze and because you know uh, testing means uh, putting a test piece with that new glaze in a firing so for that it means I have to wait for this entire kiln load to fire, cool down and then being able to 
uh, glaze the next batch. So that takes time. And so when you're in a time crunch, sometimes you don't have time for it. And that's what happens this one time where I glazed all my mugs and everything with the current batch I had. But then for the newer, bigger pieces, I didn't have enough glaze. So I made some glaze and I glazed all the big pieces with that. So my honey glaze, as uh, some of y'all might know, is like that uh, light lemon, uh, like a light yellow color glaze, uh, a tan yellow colored glaze. And uh, it's transparent, so you can see the textures and everything. So it's a very transparent glaze. However, what happened in that batch was uh, when I opened up the kiln, everything was matte. Uh, and you couldn't see the texture at all. It was just like a solid matte glaze. And it had covered the entire texture of the pieces. All the slip decoration work and stuff I'd done on the big platters were all covered up. And, and it's not that the glaze was bad. The glaze, it was a good glaze. It's a nice matte glaze but it's not what I wanted. It was definitely something that I messed up in the formulation while making the glaze. And when I looked up carefully, I realized I most likely had doubled one of the ingredients. It's like baking, you know. You can't just double something and expect everything to be fine. So that's what had happened. So fortunately, I, you know, it was those few big pieces. And since it wasn't like, you know, a production line and stuff like that, and the glaze still looked nice, it did cover up the texture a little bit, but it gave it a different look. So I still actually sold those pieces. People kind of like that look too. I just didn't want to continue with that kind of thing. So I did manage to make another batch in which I didn't put that ingredient at all so that when I mix the two batches together, it would all equalize. So I did manage to save that batch of glaze. But uh, after that, I said, you know, never again, even if it's a time crunch, uh, it's it's not worth the trouble of going through and then figuring out the harder part it's not just like oh you messed up so now you can fix it it's knowing how to fix it is a bigger problem I said I would like to be done by 11. Do you think that's possible? That means attaching handles to 44 mugs in less than an hour. Uh, I have done it before, but I've done it before when I'm not talking so I don't know if the talking makes me work faster or slower I guess we'll find out Hey, Sarah May. Yes, it's been way too long. 
I have been posting, uh, well, I, I shouldn't lie, but uh, last, this, this week I posted one or two videos and last week I posted a video of me uh, netting on my sock machine. Well, not my sock machine, it's not my sock machine. Yeah, I did stop streaming and it's not like I uh, intentionally stopped. It's just that I wasn't getting time, uh, you know, it's it was summer, I was traveling some, then we had family visiting. Oh, you were out of town as well. Yeah. So it's only like last week I was like, okay, now everyone is gone. I can kind of do this setup and do it. So even when family was visiting, I was working, but it was like, I didn't want to spend time setting up stuff. I was just like, I just need to get this work done. So I was more focused on that. And, uh, but yeah, I have been having a lot of fun with my sewing machine. I'm mean, not sewing machine, my, the sock knitting machine. And again, correction, it's not my sock knitting machine. It is a lot of work. For one thing, I have to make sure that I look presentable. And, you know, it kind of defeats the purpose of working in a clay studio if you're trying to look presentable. I'm like, no, I'm going to get messy. I need to take a shower after working in the studio. So... Alright, so that's another 8 mugs done. Can you see the 8 mugs? Okay, mostly all lace mugs. So I've done 16 mugs. I have 44 mugs to do. And my goal is to get them done by 11. I don't think it's gonna happen. We're gonna try. Yes, I've seen that. I've seen some, uh, especially the video gamers and stuff. It's like I'm going, uh, you know, my eyes automatically wander into the background and I go like, dude, your bed also isn't made up. Like, you have your clothes all piled up there. Like, at least take the time to, uh, you know, take all of that and just put it in a laundry bag or take it out of the view of the camera. Like, you can tell where they slept. <laughs> it's just... Yeah. Like, every time, I, even I, when I turn on the camera here, when I look at the back view of that, I said, that doesn't look pretty. I should cover that up. But I'm like, I don't have time for that. Yeah, that won't work. But I guess maybe that is an aspect which people enjoy watching live uh, that it is real it's not made up it's not stuff that i'm pulling out from you know under the table and say ta-da it's done <laughs> yeah. yeah it looks like a setup right if it's all done nice and pretty and i have seen some streams like that where everything is so perfect that it looks like a production and I'm like, that's not real. I did have a question for you though, Sarami. And actually, I should have messaged you when my mother-in-law was in town. Because we were, uh, she, of course, another person who loves sewing machines and everything, you know, with fabric. Uh... She wanted to know where she could get some good fabric. And me, like the person that I am, I just know about Joanne's when it comes to fabric, which was kind of like how I started with yarn as well. I was like, where do you buy yarn? Well, you buy it at Joanne's. Because I didn't know about indie dyers and uh, real bull yarn and things like that. So, um, 
she wanted to buy some fabric i took her to joanne's and she's like yeah it's okay i mean yes there's a lot of variety and everything but she couldn't find anything which appealed to her so she kept asking me so which other store we can visit i'm like well there is michael's i guess like i just know these one or two big box stores which carry fabric and um, so i was wondering if there were any uh, in person uh, she won't buy fabric online uh, so i was wondering at that time like you know which places are there to buy fabric in person yeah i mean there was good fabric she was specifically looking for like sheer fabric like uh Oh, in Oregon, there are lots of great places. Well, next time they come, we should make a trip to Oregon just for that. Then I'll remember to text you next time. Yeah, somebody was telling me about Pacific fab fabrics. Uh, Joseph. Josephine Dry Goods. Bold. Hmm, okay. Yeah, like Google searches and stuff did not help me finding anything uh, where I could go and shop. It was all online places. So, so yeah, we kind of she didn't get anything much she just got some accessories she did get a new pair of scissors she bought one last time uh, from joann's uh, it's a particular brand it's the one which they keep under lock and key big stainless steel kind of scissors she ha she got the 10 inch one last time this time she got the 8 inch one so she really, I think they are like 60 or 80 bucks or something, those scissors. But yeah, with the Joann's coupon, it was kind of nice when you can get 40% off something. Oh yes, now I remember. Laura Jean did remember uh, talk about a place, right? When we were at uh, Madrona, she said she had stopped by that place when she came up to Madrona or something. Was it in Chehalis? Did I have Daisy in their name? I don't know. But makes me think it was in Chehalis where those uh, outlet stores are. I, I have no recollection of the name. I think it's the place that is reminding me that it was probably Chehalis. Yeah, that's the city. Okay, yeah. Yeah, we were looking for something locally. I don't think we would have traveled so far. But like if it was pre-planned, then it would be like, okay, let's go to Oregon and let's, you know, stop by these shops on the way. I think she would have liked that. Yes, sister squirrel shop. Okay, yeah, that sounds familiar. I think I had gone online. Are they the ones who have a YouTube channel as well? Yeah, she was. Uh, so the sheer fabric she wanted was for like uh, curtains.
Now I was asking whether the Sister Squilt Shop uh, are they the ones who have a YouTube channel? Because I remember uh, it was, you know, it could have been after Laura Jean talked about that shop that I googled about it and I found YouTube channels or it could have been that you mentioned at Madrona about your YouTube channel and while googling about stuff I found a quilting yarn shop having a YouTube channel. So it could be either, I don't know how I came across it. So it could be that same shop or it just could be some other shop. But I know it was around that time, like right after Madrona, that I found one of the channels, which was pretty informative regarding uh, quilt making. And um, they were definitely promoting their uh, kits and things like that. But, you know, for a person like me who doesn't have a lot of small ends of fabric to make quilts it's kind of nice to have a cape tent and just make something from it i didn't purchase anything but at least it gave me an idea of what possibilities are there if you get kits and what you can make with them i did get uh two jelly rolls from I think Joanne's or somewhere and then I also got um, it's not a jelly roll but it's like almost a six inch wide strips uh, cut up like jelly rolls and bundled together uh, with nice like batik dyed fabric so I really like the colors and everything so I got that and out of the uh, regular jelly roll I did make a quilt top it's not a quilt yet, but I did just, what's it called, the jelly roll race quilt or something. That's what I did. Just sewed all the strips together, basically. It was fun. And um, like what was mentioned in a lot of the videos is there was a certain way you're supposed to do it so it doesn't bias, minded bias. Fabric by Alison Glass. I don't know. You mean the batik dyed one? I I really don't know. It was quite a while back. Oh, I just got a message from the origin. Yes, it is Sister Squirt Show. We are so connected. You messaged Laura Jean and Laura Jean messaged me. Yes. Sister School Shop and we'll have to visit there. And I have a feeling it is this shop in Chehalis. Yeah, uh huh. Wow, they have some beautiful pictures. A sunset print. Hold on, I'll get it. Yeah, the fabric is like sitting right on my shelf. So this, this is what it is, this camera, yeah, 
Yeah, so it's streaming on Facebook as well as YouTube and Twitch. So it has all these different colors and they are all this batiki colors. And it doesn't even say anything about the manufacturer or anything. They're made in India. Hmm, I just noticed that. No wonder I got attracted. So I got two of these. I have no plan. I just like the colors. They have been sitting like this in bundles on my shelf because I just love looking at the colors. Look at that. It's such a lovely rainbow. So... I just saw the colors and I was like, oh, one won't be enough for something. And I've not even sewn anything. Like, I would know whether one is enough for anything. I said, oh, one is not enough. I need two. Yeah, they, they just look so good. Sitting just as they are. And that's why I've just left them out on the shelf. I do think quilters have a lot of fun because it's, uh, you know, one thing which I do like about knitting as well and the kind of projects which I really get attracted to are like uh, scrap yarn projects um, or just, you know, using multiple yarns and colors and making something out of it, uh, even if it's a sweater or something, those kinds of things are really fun for me to plan out and make and there's so much of that planning and reuse of scraps of fabric when it comes to quilters so I think if I were to sew anything it would most likely be quilts than clothing and uh, this time my mother-in-law got some really amazing uh, uh, shirts for me the kurtas and uh, most of the time she gets them ready from a, sh a particular store I really like in India. But, uh, you know, they, they make really good clothes and everything. But after a few washes, they always shrink uh, vertically and they become short. And they always sell their stuff saying that it's pre-shrunk and stuff. And I know it isn't. So, uh, and it doesn't happen in the first few washes. It's only later on that I'll notice that it is shrinking. So, it'll be after like almost like, you know, two years or something of wearing it. Yeah, it shrinks. And it doesn't, and I'm not saying it shrinks width-wise, like I'm getting fat. That I am, but it shrinks length-wise. It just, yeah, and significantly. So like after like two years almost I cannot wear it. So it, so it, it probably like shrinks very gradually, very little by little every time you wash it. So this time uh, she said she won't get them from there and I sent her my measurements. So she purchased fabric, uh, washed it and pre-shrunk it and everything herself and then gave it to the tailor to make the shirts for me. Yeah, and that's what it makes sense, right? You have to pre-shrink it. And that's what even the store says, that that's what they pre-shrink their fabric. But, you know, like I said, and it doesn't shrink in the first few times. It's only further down the road, you realize it has shrunk. Oh, cool. Well, have fun. I, yeah, I'm 50% done with my stuff. I really would like to, it's almost 11. There's no way I'm getting done before 11. So I'll be here for another half an hour at least. So I will see you then. Have fun.
actually you know what if it's 11 i might need to take casper out for a walk right now because at 12 i have somebody coming in i just remembered So I don't know Sarami if you are online, I am going to do two more mugs and then I'm signing out from here. So I will have to catch the raid another time. end up going live later on so maybe when you are done with your stream I might still be there but Casper needs his walk Alright, this is the last mug I'm doing right now. I still have the uh, many mugs to go. Uh, wait, no, 24 are done. I'll have 20 more mugs to do. So I'm halfway done. Um, so I'll come back to it later in the afternoon after walking Casper well maybe I might come back after another half an hour or so half an hour no one hour I need one hour I have to take Casper for a walk have some lunch and somebody will a thing and then I can walk all right thank you all for joining me talk to you later